Good morning and welcome to the Folands Primary Publishing Webinar. Uh, my name is Lizzie Gibbon. I'm the Field Sales Manager here at Folands. Um, also on the panel here, I'd like to introduce you to a couple of people. So first of all, we have Eva McGrath, who is one of our authors. She's waving at you now. Um, and Kira Walsh, who is one of our commissioning editors um, and more recently uh, commissioned the new SCSE program, Explorers. Um, in the background, someone you can't see, but very, very important today is Bridget, who is in the background making all the technical stuff work. Um, so we're all coming to you from our homes, the same as you're in your home as well. Um, so if there's any little delays on the slides or anything, do bear with us. And these are really, really strange and challenging times um, for all of us. Um, and I really do hope that you and your loved ones are staying very safe and well, and that you're managing to keep things together. Um, this is a, the first year for us, it's completely weird as well. So for the first time this year, we're doing our webinars because it's the first time in a few decades that um, we've had no phone and road shows. And we didn't want to disappoint you. So um, we're doing this morning's session um, so that you guys can hear the same good news as you would have heard at the road shows. So we're pretty excited. Um, I'm looking at the numbers of people who've joined us this morning, and I think, I think we've got nearly 400 people already this morning. So that's absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much. Uh, for giving us your time this morning. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a quick update on exactly what we're going to do this morning. Um, so we've got loads of really great updates um, and the whole webinar, including our Q&A at the end, will take about 45 minutes. Um, we're going to give you some exciting highlights of programmes. Obviously, we've got a, a, a limited time, so we don't want to um, go on too long, but so about 45 minutes, including everything. So. First of all, we're going to be looking at Starlight and how it can support you to implement the primary language curriculum in your uh, school and classroom. And then Eva, who I have just introduced you to, uh, one of our authors, will be explaining Boland's Explorers. Um, and then I'll give you a quick, concise explanation of Spell It and TikTok tables. Um, and then Kira um, will be delighted to take you through Folan School at Home, which is a fantastic new initiative which is designed to support you through the coming weeks as pupils continue uh, learning from home. So after our presentations, um, as I said, there'll be time uh, to answer some of your questions. Um, so if any questions do spring to mind during the presentation, do type them in the question box um, and we'll endeavour to answer them at the end. Um, if we can't get, them, get to them, we'll try and answer them um, straight afterwards as well. well. We'll send you an answer either way. Um, at the very end of the webinar, um, if you stay online and um, don't kind of close everything down, just stay online and you'll automatically be redirected then to our end of, um, end of webinar questionnaire. So that'll automatically pop up and that'll enable your local rep to organise your free teachers yearbook, which I know you're all dying to get your hands on, and any relevant samples so that you can have a really good look at the programmes we've been talking about. So. During the webinar as well, there'll be um, the opportunity to get involved as well. So there'll be a couple of live polls and you'll see the live answers from those from all the participants, which is a really great way of all feeling like we're much more in a room together, even if we're not actually in a room together. OK, so I'm going to kick off now with Starlight. Um, so we know that most schools are working towards um, full implementation of the new primary language curriculum. Um, over the last two years, we launched Starlight, which is our comprehensive literacy program, and it offers a number of components which can be purchased separately for flexibility. So if you're still using Reading Zone or another older scheme, we very much know that Starlight can match the new needs of your classroom. Or some of you may already have adopted some components or classes of Starlight, but you might now find that other classes or other components are useful to you as you transition into that full implementation of the primary language curriculum. So today I'll give you a very quick summary of Starlight and how it can support you with the implementation of the new curriculum and the needs of your classroom. Okay. So implementing the, the primary language curriculum, I mean, Starlight completely aligns to that primary language curriculum and all of its requirements. In fact, it completely takes the pain out of implementing it for you. We've taken a very practical approach and you know, teachers tell us all sorts of things they like about Starlight, but here are some of the highlights. So first of all, Starlight integrates all three curriculum strands. So that's oral language, reading and writing in every single unit. So that means that you don't have to keep pulling literacy resources together from all over the place. 
having every unit based around the same theme and genre ties everything together. So that makes it much easier to teach and to learn. Starlight provides really straightforward, editable planning and ready-made assessments. And then differentiation is very much built into the program. For example, differentiated activities in the book, above and below achiever worksheets for every unit. And it explicitly teaches writing skills and comprehension strategies absent from many literacy programs. But most importantly, and this is the bit I love most, is that the kids absolutely love it. They really engage with the topics. So I'm going to give you a quick idea now of the components of Starlight. So Starlight integrates oral language, reading and writing around a single theme and genre. So various components are available at each class level. But here's an overview of the types of components that are available. So first of all, highly interactive oral language posters. And the, the quality of these is absolutely out of this world. The feedback we're getting is fantastic. Um, we have interactive big books and readers. And then there's core readers foundation readers and those foundation readers are just simplified versions of the core readers for weaker students so that really allows for differentiation uh, skills books combined reading and skills books and of course absolutely comprehensive teacher planning so for flexibility all of those components are priced separately and um, so that means that you can choose the components which most suit your needs depending on the literacy strategy in your school and that also means that you can be assured that at any time in the year, the components that you choose to adopt will fully integrate with each other in terms of theme and genre. Um, for each individual class, you'll find a really excellent detailed table of components specific to that class at phones.ie forward slash starlight. I'll give you a moment to write that down. OK. So a key goal in the design of Starlight was to save teachers time searching for different resources. So that's by integrating the three strands around a single theme. So I'm going to show you an example now of how the integration works. So I'm looking at a third class example. Um, each theme runs for a fortnight. And the, this particular unit is based on the theme of space and technology. The genre is persuasive. So the highly interactive oral language poster deals with the role of robots in our world. Then there's two persuasive reading texts on the theme of robots. And for their writing, the children plan and write a persuasive text, which in this example is an advert to get people to buy a new robot that they've designed. So that not only um, offers huge convenience, but consistency of approach is also proven to help children learn and retain knowledge. So basically, Starlight is everything you need for literacy in one place. So, as you'd expect from Folans, Starlight offers really, really comprehensive planning in terms of the teacher's guides, and then it's also editable in an editable format online. So this year we've actually responded to feedback and we've actually added online fortnightly plans. And you can see from here that they clearly integrate the three strands, oral language, reading and writing. So then we have the yearly plans, oral language lesson plans, and the big thing and the most important thing about that is that they were put together by a, re a renowned oral language expert, Anya Cregan from Mary I, and I'm sure that many of you will have heard of her or at least been, or even been lectured by her. Um, so just to give you a, an added bit of confidence in our material, the NCCA recently asked Anya to create the lesson, uh, the sample lesson plans, which you can find on their online teacher's toolkit as well. So you can really see we definitely have the leading oral language expert to have written those oral language lesson plans for us. So there's also, in addition to that, easy to follow reading and writing lesson plans um, and online curriculum mapping for the primary language curriculum as well. In terms of assessments, what you'll find as well is four termly assessments online, assessment checklists for oral language reading and writing, and reading texts as well. Sorry, reading tests as well. So that was a very, very quick um, whiz through Starlight. Um, if you do need to know anything else about Starlight, don't hesitate to contact your local rep. I'll give you loads of details on how to do that later. Um, this is a moment now where you guys can get really involved in, in what we're doing today. Um, so we're going to run a little poll now um, just to see what's most important to you around Starlight. Um, it's going to ask you a question, and that is, and all you need to do is just click on the answer which is most appropriate to you. 
So what do you like most about what you've just heard about Starlight? Is it the alignment to the primary language curriculum? Is it that each unit integrates oral language, reading and writing? Is it that each unit is organized by theme and genre? Or is it the planning support, including new Fort Lightly plans, which integrate all three strands? So feel free to see to vote for the one that you want to um, vote for the one that's most most relevant to you. So let's have a look and see how the answers are coming along. I'll give you a chance to do that. OK, I think we have the answers coming in there nicely there. So actually, it's a dead, dead heat between the alignment to the primary language curriculum um, and the planning support, both at 30 percent there. And then very close behind is the fact that there's that integration between the oral language, the reading and the writing, which, again, is very, very important for that primary language curriculum. Um, really, really interesting. So thank you very much for voting on that. We'll have a couple more of those as we go through the um, webinar today. So now we're going to talk about explorers. Um, Last year, we brought you the Explorers SCSE program from junior, junior infants through to second class. It's a thematic and fully integrated program for history, geography and science. So now we're absolutely delighted to launch Explorers for third to sixth classes. So I'm going to hand over now to Eva McGrath, who's the absolute expert about this. She is one of the authors on Furlan's Explorers. So thanks very much, Eva. Over to you. Thank you, Lizzie. Um, as Lizzie said, my name is Aoife McGrath. I am a full-time primary school teacher here in Tipperary, and I'm really very proud to be one of the authors involved in the Folans Explorers programme. So when we began developing the Explorers programme, uh, Folans talked to teachers like you and me about what we need in order to deliver a really successful SCSE programme in our classrooms. And the same needs came up time and time again. So with classroom life being so time poor, meaningful integration between history, geography and science is essential in order to make the most valuable use of the SESE time available to us. And that's going to be more true than ever when we return to school in the future. We also want a programme that's practical. And when I say practical, I mean it on two levels. We want it to be practical for the pupils that we're teaching. So lots and lots of hands on learning activities. But we also want it to be practical for ourselves to deliver. So we want all this, the materials easy to source. We want all our planning needs met in the program for us. We want digital resources that are pitched at the right level and play a meaningful role in the learning. We don't want to spend hours anymore in the evening trawling through websites, trying to find appropriate material or videos that will link with the topic. We want it built into the program and we want it to play a proper purpose in the learning of our pupils. We want content which is spiralled, but without undue repetition. But above all else, what we want in a SESE programme is robust content that is fresh and engaging and current and up to date for the pupils we're teaching today. And we want the programme to be absolutely rooted in the skills of the SESE curriculum. We don't need another non-fiction textbook in our classroom for SESE. What we want is the ability for our pupils to always be thinking as historians, geographers and scientists. Explorers has, has all these features in abundance and they're pitched perfectly for each level of the primary school. So last year we launched the Junior Infants to Second Class programme for Explorers. We've had really positive feedback from pupils and teachers who've been using it since September. So to make integration as seamless as possible, the junior infant to second class program is organized around 10 themes. So each theme is revisited each year in the same order, but always covering new topics and consolidating and expanding on the knowledge the children have already developed. So the junior infant to and senior infant program is a digitally led program. So what this means is there are custom made age appropriate digital resources for each topic that you're teaching. So these include videos, animations, uh, stories, interactive posters and games. 
And the pupil book then is there to support all the digital and hands-on learning that's happening in your classroom. And it gives the pupils a place to record their little experiments and investigations, and it reinforces the topics. In first and second class then, we're moving to a print-led programme because the children's reading ability is improving at this stage. So you have your visually appealing student books that provide scenario after scenario for hands-on learning opportunities and skills development. And then you again, you have your custom-made digital content to support the hands-on learning and support the information in the book for the pupils. And all of the work then at all levels is supported by your comprehensive teacher's guide which meets all your planning needs and supports all the practical tasks that you'll be engaging in with your pupils. So I just want to bring you on a little lesson walkthrough so you can see how the strands and strand units are integrated through a theme. So we're going to look at a junior infant theme here on water. To, so to start off we have our history lesson. And the children are hearing from the famous model and activist Georgie Badil about her life growing up in Burkina Faso, where she didn't actually have running water. So you can see the strand they're studying here is story, and it's the story of the life of a woman from a different social, cultural and ethnic background. So you can see how really well that fits in with the, the theme of water. Moving on to geography then, the pupils are going to learn about rain and puddles and they do this through this exciting animated story. So this is Ricky the Raindrop. I'm Ricky and I'm a raindrop. Come on, it's about to rain. That's why the sky is so dark. It's all the raindrops like me ready to fall. Let's go. Watch out. Roof ahead. Now, down the drain pipe. See you at the bottom. Whee! So I have a soon to be junior infant here at home starting off in September, and he's usually asking to watch things like Paw Patrol and Octonauts and things like that but I recently showed him some of these explorers animations and he just absolutely loves them so we are you know they're going to be really engaging to the young pupils who are in your class so moving on to science then the pupil are going to investigate the effects of water on materials and then they're going to engage in a lovely design and make challenge where they have to create a pair of wellies for their teddy. So again, a really meaningful and engaging lesson for the young pupils in your class. All the work then is supported and reinforced through the student book and it gives them a place to record what they've learned and encourages them to explore the world around them. So this year, we're launching the Explorers program from third to sixth class. So you now can have Explorers the whole way through your school. So the third class program consists of a set of visually compelling student books that are jam packed with robust content and opportunity after opportunity for skills development. So each class has a combined geography and science book along with a separate history book there are supporting digital resources for every unit, along with lists of curated web links. And all of this then is supported again by your comprehensive teacher's guide. So just to take a look at the contents page of the fourth class pupils book, each unit is covered, each subject, sorry, is covered over 16 units. So you can see that very clearly there in the history book, there are 16 units. In the combined book then, there are 12 integrated geography and science lessons, four standalone geography lessons, four standalone science lessons, making 20 units in total in that book, but again, 16 units for each subject. The units then are often paired between subjects to allow for meaningful integration. So as you can see, the ancient Romans are being taught in history at the same time Italy is being covered in geography. 
So now let's take a deeper look at a fourth class history unit, just so you can get a feel of the programme and see some of the features. So this unit is about the Normans, and we start off, as we always do in every unit of Explorers 3rd to 6th class, with our digital stimulus. So what this is, this is an image up on your interactive whiteboard with a set of accompanying questions. And it's there to set the scene, to motivate interest, and to establish prior knowledge in the subject. So here the pupils are examining a section of the Bayeux tapestry to elicit knowledge about the Normans. So right away, straight at the beginning of the lesson, we're asking pupils to think as historians and develop their using evidence skill. Jumping into the pupil book then, each unit begins with an introduction to explain to the children what they're learning and why they're learning it and to fit the content of the lesson into the bigger picture of what's going on and what learning they've already accumulated. This is really best practice, so we've included it here. There's a timeline at the beginning of most history units also. So this draws pupils' attention to the key dates and information of the lesson. It aids visual learners and it's again allowing the pupils to develop their time and chronology skills. So moving on to the next two pages, you'll notice some of these little boxes appearing and what we call these are skills stickers. So these are on nearly every page throughout the third to sixth class explorers programs and what they are, they're short, snappy, in-context skills activities which allow for regular meaningful skills development. So we want our pupils to be always actively thinking as historians, geographers and scientists and not just passively reading the text in the book. At the end of the lesson then we've included a, we've included a conclusion similar to the introduction which reinforces and summarises the main content of the lesson, again, fitting it into the bigger picture for the pupils. The final page of the unit then is where you'll find all your activities for that topic. So it starts off with five fact-finding questions, followed by five explore more questions. So this is giving you an opportunity to assess the pupils' knowledge of the content while requiring them to use both their lower and higher order thinking skills. We move on then to two curriculum-based skills activities. So here the pupils are using evidence and they have a synthesis and communication activity. So you can be assured that the whole way throughout the Explorers programme, the skills of the curriculum are being taught and explored and reinforced time and time again. This history unit on the Norman is then paired with a geography unit on mapping Ireland. As the Normans were responsible for creating lots of our towns, you can see the really natural link between the subjects here. And that's then followed by a science unit exploring forces. So again, we're using the Normans as context for examining levers, pulleys and forces. Both these units have the same features which you just saw in the history unit. So we have our introductions and our conclusions, our skill stickers and so on. And the science unit also includes a very simple yet effective design and make activity, um, which is just one of the many scaffolded investigations and design and make activities throughout the Explorers programme. So Explorers 3rd to 6th class is filled with unique features that you won't find in any other SESE programme out there. So, of course, we've included the tried and tested topics that you know and love to teach, things like medieval times and the famine, they're all in there. But we've given them a new lease of life. We've really taken a fresh approach to teaching these topics that we know and love. And as well as that, then, we've included brand new topics which are current and relatable and up to date for the pupils we're teaching today. Things like communication in the digital age and sustainability, robotics, the evolution of video games in history. All these topics are very meaningful to the pupils and you're not going to find them in whatever SCSE programme you're currently using. Another unique feature we have, in addition to the 16 regular units, we've also included four dedicated skill spreads in each book. 
So these deal explicitly with key skills of the curriculum, such as chronology, using evidence, map work, and working scientifically. So these spreads can be used as explicit, explicit lessons, but you can also come back to them and the pupils will come back to them time and time again as reference chapters. Throughout the Explorers programme, design plays a major role in bringing the content to life for pupils, while making sure that the pages aren't too text heavy. So in Explorers, each box, each map, each image or piece of artwork has a function. There are no fillers on every page. Everything has been chosen to expand the children's learning and further their learning. And the programme will be really appealing to your visual learners. Another important feature is local studies, because local studies is a hugely important feature of SESE. So we worked really hard to ensure explorers could be local to you wherever you are in Ireland. So from junior infants to sixth class, we've picked topics which are, which can be localized to your area. So topics like um, post boxes, grasslands, churches, all these areas and sites can be found locally to you all over Ireland. And we've given lots of information and guidance in the teacher's guide about how you can adapt topics to your local area. We've also really consciously included examples from all over Ireland. So from Viking Dublin to medieval Kilkenny to Karen Tuhal in Kerry to the northern headlands of Donegal, Somewhere in Explorers, there will be a feature which is local to you. And finally then, let me show you all the teacher support that the Explorers programme has to offer. The teacher's guides at each level has everything you need to plan and deliver an exciting and engaging SESE programme in your classroom. So there are yearly schemes at each level which provide you with an overview of the strands and strand units for each unit, making it really easy to develop your whole school plan. There are skills overviews to allow you to see at a glance the main skills covered in every unit, um, giving you reassurance that you're covering all the skills in a really broad and balanced manner. And this is really useful if you're having a WSE. This is what they want to see. Of course, then we've our editable unit plans that provide all your hands-on learning ideas. It gives you lists of tried and tested web links. So what that means is myself and my co-authors trawled through the websites for hours, finding the most suitable websites and videos to link with the topics you're teaching. There's background information, which is particularly useful maybe for those more difficult science activities in the senior classes. There is Asher links for infants, and there is so much more jam-packed into this, um, these unit plans. So if there's one thing, one piece of information I'd like you to take away is that the Explorers programme is a robust programme that is filled with content that is fresh and engaging and will be meaningful to your pupils. And it gives you opportunity after opportunity to allow your pupils to engage with skills development. I can't wait to get it into my classroom, and I hope you can't wait too. I'll hand you back over to Lizzie, you're with Mila Mahagriff. Thanks so much, Eva. that's absolutely fantastic. What we'll do now is we'll do a couple of uh, poll questions again to get everybody involved in the session. Um, so the first question we're going to throw, to, throw out to you all is, is around the needs that we were trying to meet with explorers. So it's, it's really about which of the needs that phones explorers meet are most important to you. So hopefully we can get the poll up now. Bear with us while we, uh, while we do that. Ah, oh, there we go, great stuff. So yeah, which of these needs that phones explorers meet are most important to you? So first of all, is it the content? So the robust, meaningful, engaged, engaging and up-to-date content? Is it the clear and straightforward skills focus? Is it the integration across history, geography and science? Is it the practical support for hands-on learning? Or is it the spiral content that progresses without, without repetition? So if some of you have already started voting, which is fantastic. So you can all vote now um, and tell us which is the most important need that, that Explorers meets. I'll give you a moment to do that now. I can see a clear winner coming up here. 
So all you need to do is just click on the one that, that you think is most important. Should be pretty easy for everyone to vote anyway. We're getting some good numbers of people voting here now. Yeah, very clear when they're here now. Okay, so maybe we can show the answers there. Fantastic. So a clear winner there is the integration across history, geography and science at 41%. Uh, and then at 28%, we have the content, so that robust, meaningful and engaging content. So really, really interesting. So thanks all for taking part in that. We're actually going to ask another question now on Phones Explorer. So if, I, if we can go to the next poll now. Um, this is more about the unique features of Phones Explorer. So we just, we'd be really interested to see which is the most appealing to you. So which of these Phones Explorer's unique features is most appealing to you? Is it the first thing is introductions and conclusions to support the big idea? Is it the variety of topics? Is it the engaging design and clear layout? Is it the custom made and age appropriate digital resources? Or is it the local studies content? So we're getting good numbers of people voting already. Again, we seem to be uh, getting a nice clear winner there. I'll give you a moment for everyone to, everyone to vote. So I think we're getting there. Yeah, I think we're pretty much there. So the answer's there. So the a clear winner, again, is that the custom made and age appropriate digital resources are the clear winner. And we are getting that feedback time in, time out from, um, from teachers because I guess the amount of time it takes to go looking for all this stuff. And yet, you know, our authors have, as, as Eva said, carefully curated that. And then we have the clearly specifically designed stuff as well. Really, really good. So we'll move on now. Okay. Just give me a moment for my slides to catch up with me. Okay. So I'm going to give you a whistle stop tour now of Spell It and Tip Top Table. So we launched Spell It this year for first to sixth classes um, this year. So and it's in line with the primary language curriculum. So here's some of the key features of Spell It. So first of all, there's a systematic approach to spellings, which is based on phonics and letter patterns. Secondly, it prov provides regular opportunities for revision. From fourth class upwards, um, there are dedicated units for common misspellings. There are high frequency words included in every unit, which are revised each year. And then there are also challenge words that provide stretch opportunities. Spell it is really visually engaging and th there's, the activities in it are really many and varied. And then one of the things that people love most is the digital games from first to fourth classes. And that really allows students to practice spellings in a really fun way. So one of the big things I'm going to take you through now is how well planned spell it is. So looking at the table of contents for first class, children progress from short vowel sounds through to blends and digraphs, the magic E and alternative um, vowel sounds, and finally diphthongs and R controlled vowels. So this sequence of instruction is really similar to what children would cover in phonics, uh, where they move from simple sounds to more difficult ones. So then similarly, there it is. Similarly, when you look at the sixth class table of contents at the beginning of the year, children are looking at some of the more complex phonic sounds, but then quickly progress to letter sounds such as ice and ace, um, as well as common misspellings and prefixes and suffixes. So this planning means that spell it, with spell it, you'll have a whole school plan for spelling, which is completely appropriately level for every class. And it systematically covers all of the phonic sounds and letter patterns that children need to be able to spell properly. So a couple more things about spell it. So the writing strand of the new primary language curriculum really clearly states that specifically that children should spell a wide range of high frequency words accurately. And spell it is the only spelling series on the market that does this. So to help then with differentiation in the classroom, each unit in spell it contains a number of challenge words. This is what I mentioned earlier, but this is what it will look like in the book. And then two of my own favorite parts of the books are the words I found difficult pages and the spelling tests as well. Then there's a whole rake of online resources with spell it as well. So first of all, you have digital games, and it's really well, we probably don't have time to have a look at them now, but they're all there on phones.ie. 
So if you go to phones.ie and you search for spell it in the search bar, you'll be able to try out some of those spelling games. Then we have printable differentiated worksheets and printable flashcards for first to fourth classes. And then on top of all of that online, you've also got dictation sentences, um, correct answers for each activity following for allowing for easy correction. Uh, master sheets are spellings for each year. So that's essentially a school plan, really. So you really can be assured that you'll have really confident and competent spellers by the end of the year using, um, using Spellit. OK, so a quick move on then to uh, tip top tables. Uh, we launched this one this year as well. Um, and here's some of the highlights. So TikTok Tables is absolutely a one-stop shop for tables. And as well as the standard tables pages that you would expect, it includes tips for parents on building number sets, ideas um, for games that you can do around tables, and then ready-made addition and multiplication grids to help students add and multiply, and then printable tables um, practice sheets online as well. So there's some really nice things. So I've done a very quick whistle stop tour of those things there. But um, if you want to find out more about anything that we've been talking about today, because we've been quite concise about things this morning, um, do use our website, so folums.ie. Um, you can find uh, folums.ie forward slash starlight will take you literally straight to starlight. The same for explorers, folums.ie forward slash explorers. For spell it or for TikTok tables, you literally just need to go to folums.ie and then you can just um, search for them in the search bar. That works quite well too. Um, and of course, although your phone's representatives um, aren't able to visit you at the moment, they are absolutely available to, um, to talk to you over the phone. They'd be more than delighted to talk to you over the phone or even a video call. So they can help you with which components will specifically match your class or school needs. They'll help you with relevant pricing, including guiding you through purchasing for book rental schemes, how to adopt programs which include digital licenses. Um, they can organise relevant samples to be sent to you, even if that means sending them to your home address at the moment, which is, I know that's, that's necessary at the moment. Um, they can help you with any special offers that are happening at the moment. Um, and they're, as I said, they're available for video calls with you and a small group of your colleagues, if that's an easy way for you to work. Um, so to find your own rep, just go to phones.ie forward slash our reps. Um, and I'll just give you a moment to take that off, that, uh, those, those URLs down as well. Okay. So now I'm really, really excited to be able to hand over now to Kira, who's going to take you through Folan School at Home. So this was an initiative that um, very much came as a result of the feedback from teachers to our staff about some of the challenges that you're all facing in the current crisis. So we really believe that this should support, you know, you to help parents and then them to help children who are learning at home in the coming weeks. And so I'm going to hand over to Kira now who put it all together. So she'll explain all. Thanks, Lizzie. And good morning, everyone. Uh, so as Lizzie said, I'm just going to take a couple of minutes um, to just run you through one of our latest initiatives, which is Soul and School at Home. So to give you some context on this, um, when schools closed back in March, uh, we got our heads together and we tried to think of ways we could make the transition to remote teaching as straightforward as possible for you as teachers and for your students and their parents. So one of the first things we did was open up Folans Online uh, for free access for everybody. Um, and if you haven't done that yet, or if you, there's any um, parents or students in your school who haven't done that, I've just brought the um, instructions for how to do that up on screen there now. So it's, it's quite straightforward. You just have to go to folansonline.ie and click register and select teacher, even if you're a parent reg registering. Fill in a username, email and password. And then for the role number, you use the code PRIM20 for access to all of our primary resources. And even if you already had an account with us with access to the programs you were using, you could set up a new one uh, with a different email address now using that code so you can get access to everything we have available. So the problem with this was that Folans Online had never been designed to be used by parents. And even for teachers like yourselves, you're used to going in and just seeing all the resources that were relevant to your class that you were using. But suddenly with opening Folans Online up to everybody, everyone was seeing uh, over 130 different titles and over 10,000 individual resources that we have to offer on Folans Online. 
which is an overwhelming amount for anybody to try and get through, particularly parents, um, but also as teachers, it's just you, no one knew where to begin. There was so much there. So we tried to come up with something to help with that, which is how we came up with Bowling School at Home. So what this is, is a place where parents can go and access really concise, simple, straightforward plans with a manageable, manageable amount of content that they can use at home with their children. So the plans are available on the Folan School at Home site. They're grouped into four different levels. You've got infants, first and second class, third and fourth class, and then fifth and sixth class. Each week, there's new plans uploaded for each of those levels. And the plans from the previous weeks remain up there so that there is a bank of them building up. And we're now actually into week six of this. So there is content up there to choose from as well. The plans themselves have been written by experienced teachers and presented in a really parent friendly manner. So at the start of each plan, there is an overview for the week of what's included. Each plan for every level includes content for the core subjects of English, Gaelga and Maths as well as SESE, using our most popular programmes for each of those subjects. So Starlight for English, Oberlum for Gaelga, Planet Maths for Maths and Explorers, which you've just seen this morning from IFA uh, for SESE. There are two activities for each of the subjects, so it's a manageable amount. It's not designed to be overwhelming in any way for parents. Um, and the activities themselves are really clearly presented and there is a link for each of them there in the plan that will bring the parents straight to the resource on Bolands Online so they don't have to search through anything. And what to do with it then is broken down step by step in a really parent friendly way. So we're not just giving them the resource itself, but also telling them what they can do with it with their child. For Irish in particular, we know that it's an area parents can struggle with because they might not have a lot of Irish themselves or even have no Irish that we, where possible, have given translations uh, for, for the content that they'll be looking at with their child. Um, and then at the end of each plan, we also have a printable section so that there's content there. The parents, if they choose to and they have the facility to do so, can print out content to use at home. So not everything has to happen on the screen. So there's some worksheets and that the children could fill in as well. These plans can be accessed from the Folans Online homepage by clicking on the Folans School at Home button or directly at www.folansonline.ie forward slash Folans hyphen primary. We really hope that they are useful for parents at home with their children at the moment and also for yourselves as teachers that you could direct parents to these to use um, or indeed use them as a starting point for your own plans which you're sending home um, for parents because we know that a lot of people are time poor at the moment with everything going on so hope that they're of some use for you thank you very much sorry about that little delay there so i think we've got time now for some for a bit of q a and i think that eva's going to join us as well kira's going to stay online um, so i have all the experts around me um so yeah we've got a good few questions that have come in um so we've got a few minutes now to to, to, to do some questions and answers I hope, hopefully we'll all be able to answer them between us anyway um, so the first question we've had from a few people is around how starlight caters for differentiation i'll kick off and try and answer that question um there's a number of areas where starlight caters for differentiation i'm just trying to think of them all here now but there's um so in the digital or language posters um there are starters and flyers stories um and those are the same stories but they're very much pitched at different language levels they're really really useful to be able to differentiate between different classes in your room or even just at different times um across the time that you've been working on that particular area um the question mode in the oral posters as well um the questions are actually graded so they go right through from literal through to inferential um and you can target then the questions there at different students based on their own ability so although you're having an oral language lesson and you'll be talking to the whole group you can actually target the questions based on your knowledge of the kids in front of you so that's really really helpful um the oral language lesson plans the language is clearly tiered so that's very very helpful for differentiation so then i'm thinking going through to the readers then um there are early finisher or challenge activities at the end of every chapter in the books 
Um, in the junior classes, of course, what I mentioned earlier as well is those foundation reader, readers, which are exactly the same stories on a simpler level. Um, so the book looks the same, it feels the same, uh, with the same pictures, etc. But it's at a much simpler language level. So you can either choose to um, have some kids on one and some kids on the other, or some some schools choose to use all of one or all of another based on the, the kids that they have in front of them but it just really gives you that option which is really really helpful um so that that's a little bit about the differentiation um there's another question i'm getting in here and it's possibly slightly linked with that one as well so how can starlight be used for a multi-grade setting um i'll give you my experience to date just hearing back from teachers on how they've been doing this um is that they tend to pick one class level um, a book that they'll use or one class level of Starlight that they'll use within the classroom just to make things simple for themselves. But then they'll use all of those different supports that we have in place um, to help teach all the different levels in the classroom. I mean, I'm wondering whether Eva might be a really good person to talk to on this one because she's a teacher. <laughs> so Eva, what do you think? Yeah, I've, I have taught mixed classes. I've had that awkward second, third class mix a few times. And I would generally just choose one textbook to use and then differentiate accordingly. Um, but I mean, even with straight classes, sometimes the range of ability there, you could have pupils from junior infant level right up to sixth class. So as professionals, we're used to differentiation. And I suppose the great thing about Starlight is it's all there for us. So it takes the burden off creating those extra resources to differentiate um, throughout your class. Um, it's there, you listed them all there, they're there for us. So that's really yeah. useful. Fantastic. Thanks, Ethan. For that. that's, that's great. OK, so this question is coming from quite a good few people in different formats. But what support is there for teaching science and explorers? Yeah, that's a concern that we hear from so many teachers um, may not consider themselves to be experts in science. And so maybe aren't necessarily as confident as they might be. Uh, I'm going to hand over maybe to Kira for this one. Yeah, um, no, I, I mean, you're right, Lizzie, in what you said that um, science is something that comes up a lot. And it, it came up in our research that teachers were looking for support with science even more than they were with, with geography and history. Um, so, and obviously there's, there's a really big focus on STEM at the moment as well. So teachers wanted to be able to deliver as best they could um, in the area of science. So to help with that, we've made the science content within the book really clear. So it's really straightforward and easy to follow. Um, there's plenty of investigation and design and makes in there. They're all broken down step by step. So the children are scaffolded throughout um, and that they're very achievable. Even the materials that are needed are things that teachers can easily get their hands on. They're not something they're going to have to try really hard to find or even go out and, and purchase. Um, and as well as that, then the teacher's guide itself, which Aoife was talking about earlier on, there's uh, so much support material in that. So there's background notes for teachers about the science concepts. So it's made really clear what they're delivering on and what the key points are, what misconceptions to watch out for, and all the materials they're going to need. And in some cases, we've even included web links that are specifically for teachers so that they can get a really clear idea of what they're delivering for students in that in that particular area of science. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Eva, do you have anything to add there at all? Yeah, I suppose history is my area of interest and my strong point. So science is one of those things that I can find challenging, especially at the more senior levels. But I have seen the Explorers program, the student book and the um, teacher's guides. And I've looked deeply into the science. And for my own sake, I was thrilled because everything is there, as Kira said, step by step. And it's really clear. So I, it really gives me the confidence that I'll be able to you know, tackle those more difficult, maybe. Um, science activities, but it's there for me and I'll be able to achieve it with my pupils. Great stuff, that's fantastic. Um, so someone else actually specifically asked, is there a specific list of equipment that I need for each science lesson? The answer to that, yes. <laughs> Resulting yeah. yes. Is there yeah. is. There's the teacher plan gives you <laughs> exactly what you need. And there's even a list at the back of the teacher's guides for every level of the general things that you'll use throughout the year. So it's well laid out for you in terms of what you need. That's great, thank you. OK, so this question's come in a few times. So, um, yeah, asking us, to, it, it's coming in different formats, but asking us to clarify about the digital for explorers and how it works. Um, I'm going to hand over to Kira because she's the commissioning editor for this one. So, yeah, so the, the digital, it is slightly different um, at different levels of explorers. So I can see why, you know, we have people looking for clarity on that. Um, so it just it all depends on what was needed. And this all came from our research as well. So that at infants, the digital plays a major role. 
so it's central to the program a lot of the content is delivered through the digital it supports the hands-on learning and um, so it's, it's a digitally led program um, and that is why it it has a it's separate and it can be purchased separately to the books themselves whereas as the children's reading abilities develop and there's more and more resources out there available uh, for students at the older levels so first to sixth class on the digital plays more of a supporting role and the books become more central so in that case the digital there's still custom made digital there for every class level but it plays more of a role you might use it to introduce a lesson or at the end of a lesson so it's not as central and it's more there's more time also given there to web links as well as our custom made digital so what Aoife mentioned earlier about we thrall through the internet see what's out there and pick out the best of it for you so that the digital it's it more surrounds the book itself rather than being at the center of it and that's why it comes included with the program for first six class fantastic great stuff thanks Kira, for that I think we have time for one more question. This is a this is one that made me laugh a little bit, but then, and um, are there any special special offers on at the moment? Well, I hope that that means that's a good sign, and um, I'll answer that one. So the answer is yes, um, especially for schools who are looking to adopt Starlight or Explorers. Yes, we do have special offers. So um, we're also looking um, to get, we're also getting a good few requests from teachers looking to put together packs of workbooks as well, um, that we wouldn't know that they wouldn't normally have on their book list. So maybe that. I'm needing to do a little bit of working from home, even part time in September. So obviously there's a little bit of authority about how that's all going to work. So basically our reps are the best people for you to speak to on that. So they'll talk through everything with you, with you and they'll put together our best prices and special offers, depending on, you know, um, your own classroom needs, your school needs. Um, it might be depending on the strategy for literacy in your or SESE in your school. Um, so and also, you know, what, whatever you're already using in the school. So. The reps are the best people to do that and they'll really guide you through that process and they will give you the best offers because obviously you know it, it's important to them that they that they do a good job um as i said before to get hold of your local rep it's bolands.ie forward slash our reps um i think that's all we've got time for now though i mean and anything else to add from the ladies here there at all no <laughs> No, fantastic. So happy to come through we'll we'll make sure to add, like anything we haven't answered now we'll make sure to answer exactly yeah absolutely um so i think that's all we've got time for now so if we didn't manage to get to your question as as kira says you know we'll happily answer them for you afterwards the reps are very very good for that as well um so thanks so much for giving us your time this morning don't forget to stay online um to complete the question there because that's the thing that makes sure that our reps can organize your free yearbook and your relevant samples as well so again thanks so much for joining us this morning it's fantastic to have so many of you online with us this morning and the most important thing is to stay safe um, and, and stay with it. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Goodbye. Stay online, though, for your questions. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.